In the first video, we showed you how to do a basic install of 3CX on Call Manager. In this video, I'm going to show you a little bit about how to configure and use on Call Manager. Um, this first screen that comes up is the scheduling function, but uh, we want to first take a look at creating um, people who can be notified of uh, support requests, after hour support requests. So you'll see I've created one here. Let's create another so that you can see that process. So put in my extension, name, um, I'll explain this in a second. Okay, so one of the things that you'll notice is that while I have two people here with different extensions, I've specified the notifications to be the same for both people. This is just for demonstration purposes so that you can see notifications taking places at multiple levels. Um, what I mean by that is that with On Call Manager, you can specify groups of users that are notified at different times. So there'll be a first level support group that are the ones that receive notifications first. And then if nobody in that group responds in the specified number of attempts, attempts and uh, then it will escalate up to the next level of users. So I've created two users, one for the first level and one for the second level. Up here you'll see how you determine how many times a, a person or persons are notified before it escalates to the next level and then um, how many minutes to wait between notifications and since we're doing a demo here and we don't want to wait five minutes between notifications um, I've set it to um, just one attempt before it escalates to the next person and only wait one minute between uh, notifications. So I've saved those changes. Now uh, when you create users that's fine but when you change these settings there is one step that's not intuitive and that is that you have to go in and you have to restart the on-call manager service. So if you right mouse click on it and choose restart it'll then go out and get those settings. Now the uh, this Windows service runs all the time in the background and it monitors the voicemail box that we specified in the setup procedures in the previous video and when it sees new voicemails show up there it starts the notification process alright so we've created some users we've specified how uh, frequently to notify uh, let's take a look at the scheduler now you'll see now that there are two columns one for Matthew and one for Samuel uh, and this is where you can specify uh, the schedule for um, these individuals. Now, right now you'll see that we're looking at Monday through Friday, but um, today's Saturday. Yep, I'm working on Saturday, and I need to specify an appointment for Saturday. So I've got one in there, but I wanted to show you how to set one up for Samuel. So you just right mouse click, choose new all day event. Uh, you can type in some information that will display in the calendar. Um, here's the important piece. This is where you specify uh, the escalation level and press OK. So you'll notice the difference in color as well. So first level green, second level yellow, um, and I think third uh, level is red. Um, each level can contain one or multiple people in it. Um, okay, so we've scheduled that. Let me um, touch one more thing, and that is that you notice that I just specified an all-day event. You certainly have the ability to be more precise to specify start and end times. But um, let's look at the logic of this, that normally you would not be sending somebody to the after-hours voicemail unless it's after-hours. So it's pretty simple to just specify an all-day event and the only time the the notifier is going to do it is after business hours. So real simple to set a full day. Okay, so um, that's the scheduling. Let's try actually doing some notifications. So I'll dial extension 100. 
Record your message and press pound or press star to contact the operator. This is a test of on-call on manager. And what we should see shortly is uh, uh, um, a telephone call here that's uh, identifying to us that there's an after hours support call. Now I skip that one so that you can see it escalate up to the second level. Um, and hopefully this will happen fairly quickly so that we're not sitting here staring at the screen. But remember in the background you just heard my uh, SMS text message arrive on my cell phone. Um, I also receive an email um, with uh, information about the uh, request um, and also a text transcription of the voicemail that was left will be included in that uh, email. Alright, so we should see a second level notification here shortly and I'll answer that one so that we can see what happens when somebody actually answers on. Alright. So it's transferring me to extension 110. There's a 110. new voicemail message in the on-call voicemail box. Press 1 to go to voice. So I pressed 1 to be transferred to... Please hold while I transfer your call. All right, so I want to explain what's going Please on Please enter here. personal identification number, then press pound. We're getting additional notifications because n nobody's heard it yet, and there's up to three levels of notification. But uh, let me... Please. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, let me try that again. I waited too long. Please enter personal identity. Please enter extension number. Please enter personal ID. You have one new message and one old message. Press star to play. Press nine. This is a test of on-call on manager. Press zero for next message. Okay, so we should see shortly, there they are, notifications that are just telling us that um, the call has been listened to and the presumption being that uh, somebody... you hear that part. The voicemail has been heard. Okay, so essentially everybody's been notified that the voicemail has been heard and so you don't need to respond to it. Um, so it'll go back and it'll notify all of the people that were previously notified that the uh, voicemail has been handled. Let me quickly show you the events here. So here's an event. You see the voicemail, the date and time. And you'll see all of the transactions that took place. This is when the voicemail was created. Here's who was notified. This is when it was heard. And these are the notifications that um, it was heard. Okay. But uh, more interestingly, you can go in and you can take a look at this. And here's the text transcription of the voicemail. And here you can specify a disposition. I handled it. save and now you have a full um, accounting of what happened with this particular voicemail request anybody can go in and look and see did we meet our service level agreements um, has it been handled and that's basically the whole purpose of on-call scheduler hopefully that's been helpful thank you